The government is this morning launching the Kenya Mortgage Refinance Company, a key pillar in the realization of the housing scheme being spearheaded by President Uru Kenyatta. Now, the shareholders of this new company are Treasury, alongside seven banks, the World Bank and the Housing Finance Group. And now we are joined by reporter Dennis Otieno, who is covering the launch for us. Um, Dennis, good morning. It's good to see you. What further details can you share with us about this launch? A very good morning to you, Nzinzi. Uh, this has been uh, the culmination of a uh, long process uh, that has seen uh, the CBK um, for the last uh, one year or so try and draft uh, regulations uh, for the formation of this uh, mortgage company, which they are referring to as uh, the Kenya Mortgage uh, Refinancing Company. It is an agency that uh, is going to be used uh, to uh, uh, generally just uh, advance, uh, advance or rather uh, extend cash uh, to banks and circles in the country uh, for own lending uh, to home buyers, uh, those who wish to own homes uh, in the country at an affordable rate. Uh, remember that uh, when it comes to uh, home ownership, uh, we do have a very uh, few homeowners uh, in the country and uh, the trend that has actually been uh, uh, witnessed in the past is that uh, many home buyers have been opting uh, to buy homes uh, uh, outside the uh, uh, major cities, uh, outside the uh, urban centers. Uh, when you look at uh, Nairobi, uh, those who own land and uh, homes uh, have actually uh, resorted to buying uh, 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 houses uh, uh, in the outskirts of Nairobi, uh, looking at uh, counties like uh, Kajiado uh, and uh, Machakos, where we have uh, home buyers uh, in areas like uh, Kamulu and also uh, Kitengela. But uh, for this particular uh, agency, uh, we understand that uh, it will make it possible uh, for even those who are uh, earning uh, less than uh, 60,000 or even uh, uh, 50,000 shillings to actually uh, get a chance of uh, owning uh, a home uh, through uh, uh, a home loan. Um, we will invite uh, uh, the Kenya Bankers Association uh, CEO, uh, Habi Lolaka, just to give us some insights as to uh, what really is the significance of this particular agency and uh, if indeed it is going uh, to uh, change uh, the scenario when it comes to uh, owning homes in the country. Lolaka, kindly step forward. Thank you for joining us uh, for this short interview. Now, uh, clearly uh, the issue of uh, home ownership has been uh, uh, at the back of uh, everyone's mind and uh, many saying that uh, they cannot own homes as a result of uh, the low incomes that they have. Uh, how significant is this particular launch and is it really going uh, to lead to um, affordable or should, I, should you say cheap homes uh, in the country? Yeah, I think as you have mentioned clearly there is uh, an apparent lack of um, or rather inability of most um, salaried people to be able to afford the kind of mortgages that are available in the market. And this is partly because of the fact that um, uh, one is that we do not have long-term funding available in the market and so when somebody gets a mortgage, for instance, and uh, takes a mortgage that is three years, you know, in, in terms of uh, duration, mm -hmm. and one takes the same amount but over a 15-year um, uh, duration, the repayment terms are very different. Now, the person who takes it for three years feels like as if it's very expensive. Yet, actually, the reason is just because the loan has not been spread over a long enough period for the repayment terms to be affordable by the consumer. And that's exactly how Kenya Mortgage Refinance Company comes in, in the sense that um, it will be availing uh, liquidity in the market on a long-term basis where financial institutions can be able to access long-term liquidity and therefore be able to on-lend long-term mortgages. To the eventual borrowers so the longer the duration of the mortgage the more the lower the repayment terms on terms of a monthly repayment and therefore it becomes affordable and therefore fits within the cash flow projections of the consumers most of them so <clears throat> the, there are two issues there is the issue of the length of the of maturity of the of the mortgage which can now be afforded given that there's long-term funding available in the market and then there's the price of the money itself. And given that um, the Kenya Mortgage Finance Company will be going out into the market, issuing bonds and uh, instruments over the capital markets to be able to access cheaper funding, then they'll be able to also on lend to the financial institutions cheaper. And therefore, the financial institutions are also able to on lend to the mortgage takers on a cheaper basis.
Yeah. Um, do you see this uh, um, increasing uh, uh, homeowners in the country? Because uh, in the past, uh, we've seen some efforts, but then again, the number is still low of those who are taking uh, mortgages. Certainly, I think so, because the constraints that have been uh, inhibiting the uptake of mortgages have partly been because uh, the, 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 the repayment terms are very steep for most um, salaried people. And what the Kenya Mortgage Refinance Company is doing is that um, it will afford more affordable repayment terms to the to the consumers and so we see that constraint being addressed and therefore the uptake of mortgages picking up right now we have got just below 30,000 mortgages formal mortgages in the banking sector and i think with the kenya mortgage finance company coming in and affording funding to the financial institutions which then they can be able to refinance the existing stock of mortgages, I think we see the uptake picking up because now it becomes affordable to the consumers and so more salaried people will now be able to take uh, mortgages. I know you've been working uh, with the central bank uh, on this issue. Um, what sort of measures maybe have you put in place to ensure that uh, there will be no maybe um, hidden rates that might actually uh, um, uh, reverse uh, the gains that uh, will be made uh, in this uh, uh, company? I think one is a regulatory framework. Um, uh, if you recall, sometimes back there were a lot of measures that were taken to ensure that uh, the Kenya Mortgage Finance Company comes under the purview of the central bank. And so the laws are amended to ensure that our central bank can regulate the newly uh, structured institution. And also regulations were therefore issued thereafter to ensure that um, uh, central bank is then able to regulate the institution. So I think in terms of the regulatory framework is now fairly in shape. Um, uh, central bank will be able to have a grip on the actions of the entity. And so it will be like any other regulated entity, where things like corporate governance, things like transparency, things like um, consumer protection issues will be addressed through the regulatory framework. And I think we now are seeing the regulator becoming more alert to consumer protection issues, to transparency in terms of pricing, and also given that um, uh, the structure of the Kenya Mortgage Finance Company is such that um, they'll be able to access the capital markets directly, be able to issue instruments, and those instruments um, uh, will be fairly priced, and therefore the entity is able to, to, to on lend the funding to the financial institutions. The good thing about that is that I'm um, uh, Kenya mortgage finance company is not strictly a profit-making entity, so it should be able to lend those funds at a fairly reasonable uh, markup. And uh, what will then happen is that um, given that the banks and the circles and the other beneficiaries of this funding uh, will be accessing um, lower or cheaper funds, their cost of funding will be lower, and then their therefore able to on lend those funds at a much lower rate. So I think in terms of addressing the cost of funding in the market, I think the structure in place is well placed to address the cost of funding. And then the other one we talked about is the duration of the mortgage and the, the, you know, the length of, um, of the mortgage and that's also being addressed by KMRC. So I think we are seeing the framework being set up in place for ensuring that the uptick of mortgages and of course it boils into the big four agenda the affordable housing uh, agenda which then fits in quite well okay. thank you so much mr olaka we'll let you uh, get back to the event thank, thank you. you very much Good day. all right uh, zinzi and wahiga there you have it um, remember that uh, the issue of uh, mortgages in the country has been uh, one that has seen uh, uh, many uh, uh, players in the sector uh, discuss uh, at the moment uh, as at uh, d december 2017 we had only less than um, an estimated uh, 25,000. Uh, mortgages are uh, being taken up in the country and this uh, many uh, stakeholders have said that uh, is an extremely low number bearing in mind that uh, the population of Kenya has uh, hit uh, over 50 million and uh, uh, just uh, to uh, set off uh, this particular agency the government uh, will be investing uh, an initial capital of uh, 1.5 billion shillings uh, in this uh, particular uh, refinancing uh, mortgage refinancing company and uh, thereafter it will invite uh, more investors who will continue uh, 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 pumping in uh, more funds and Zinzi and Wahika.
Thank changed. you so much, uh, Dennis Otenio, for that. Sounds interesting, but I'm sure many of you have lots of questions about this new company, the Kenya Mortgage Refinance Company. Let's get some answers now from Trevor Mbija, who is on standby with our business editor, Joseph Ponyo. Trevor. Oh, well, thanks, Higgs and Zinzi. It's interesting what uh, your TNU is raising there, the issue of the number of mortgages that are being taken up. And Joseph Bonyo is a Citizen TV business editor, is now joining me live. We, st we stand at about 25,000, 26,000. That's about 3.2% of the GDP compared to South Africa, which stands at 30%. Treasury says this is really the low uptake is really because of the cost of homes, mm. and now this, which has a ripple effect on the cost of the mortgage. So how is this Kenya Mortgage Refinancing Company going to help cushion Kenyans, and is it going to make it any better? Thank you, Trevor. Uh, the first thing that we must understand is that this is a refinancing company. Mm -hmm. A refinancing company simply means that banks will be able to borrow money from the Kenya Mortgage Refinancing Company for onward lending. Mm -hmm. So a bank, let's say like NIC Bank, would be able to access a pool of funds from this company for onward lending. And it is for affordable housing, not any house. So there would be a pricing that loans up to this much are the ones that will, will be allowed under this refinancing uh, plan. Uh, what I've seen so far is they're talking about housing going for a maximum of about 3 million Kenya mm -hmm. shares. Because remember, the government has got this ambitious affordable housing plan that they're saying that they want to do about 500,000 uh, houses. So all these houses that will be available through this plan would be at least 3 million Kenya shares. Yeah. And that is what they're saying should be an affordable house. And this is where the main problem is, Joseph Bonio, because now the concern is even the affordable housing, not everybody qualifies to begin with. True yeah. that. And then the mortgage refinancing company also doesn't mean, is, it's, is it going to have a direct impact on how much you pay? Because right now the, the numbers change. Between 2016, the houses were going for about 8.1 million. Now it's about 9.1 million. Is that going to affect it in any way? It might if the communication is done well and uh, people are educated better to understand because what is happening in this country and what has led to the low uh, mortgage uptake, first of all, is always the what I'd call the fear of mortgages mm -hmm. because uh, history has it that many people who went for mortgages in the 80s, late 70s and early 90s uh, got to a point that they could not refinance this. And therefore, these houses were auctioned by banks. Yes. And that has always made people fear mortgage. The other thing that happens is that the way banks have priced their mortgages are way too exorbitant for the common person, a salaried person, to access it. So this plan is to ensure that a bank will be able to lend at a set guideline because these are money that they're receiving from a refinancing company. So it's sort of a guarantor that if you lend this money at this amount, then we are able to support you. So there'll be no fear of defaults and all that. Mm -hmm. And that is why they must really work on their communication to ensure that Kenyans understand that this is one of the ways that the government is trying to uh, uh, improve uh, access to housing. Yeah. But if they don't do that, then every other person will want to feel that this is just another bank issuing a mortgage, and we know the history of mortgages, they're expensive, because the average mortgage loan in this country is about 8.9 million, 9 million. And so that is way above a number of people's uh, affordability. Mm -hmm. So they must really communicate this very well to ensure that there's good uptake to it. Yeah. Yes. So these guarantees you're talking about, we have about 42 banks and only seven of them are taking part. And, and, and that, that is the most worrying trend yeah. at the beginning because we would have expected yeah. that all the 42 plus banks would have joined in. But you see from what I've seen initially, there are very few banks, about seven of them. Uh, majority of partners to this currently are circles. I see there is Unitas Circle, Unitas Microfinance. I've seen Steamer Circle there. Mm -hmm. I've seen a couple of them. The only banks that I've seen there that you could classify as tier one banks is only KCB Group and uh, Coop. The rest have seen Stanbeek, have seen NIC Bank. And this is telling that why is it that the other major players in the Kenya's uh, lending sector have shied away from it. At one point we raised this issue with Equity Bank CEO James Mwangi and he said very well that I am in the same business. So if I can lend money to people directly without having somebody backing me up, then I'm in good business. Yeah. So it tells you that banks have really not bought into this idea. And that is where their communication needs to come in. Yeah. Try and convince banks to come in and be part of this plan. Because if my, ordinarily my bank is not part of this, 
then I will have to raise questions that if they're not there and are being told that this thing is going to offer me mm -hmm. cheap lending so that I can be able to buy a house, then why are they only a few of these gigs? So the people behind this, that is Treasury, must ensure that they convince banks and bring all the banks on board to make it a success. So essentially then we're saying not all Kenyans are going to benefit from this because we've seen it even with the interest rate capping whereby now banks decide not to lend anymore. And KCB, who you're talking about as emerged as the largest financial of home buyers, mm -hmm. it stood at about 54.3 billion shillings in outstanding yes. loans, and more than 6,400 mortgages. Mm -hmm. So it means then there's not going to be any trickle effect for the common money down there. There could be but not as much as would have been expected. Because yeah. you see, the essence here, they're saying it's for affordable housing. So you identify a house and they qualify you, they pre-qualify you. So if it's a house that is up to about 3 million Kenya shillings, then you can. And again, the normal lending procedures will have to take place because you must demonstrate ability to repay. Yeah. Because they're not just going to lend to you because they're being refinanced, no. They must assess you and credit profile will definitely come in here. Mm. Are you able to repay this loan? Because it's a mortgage. Okay. You have to repay it at the end of the day. And so they must assess you on that. Aleron Waiga Moro is bringing in a question concerning more about stakeholders in the industry and uh, private sector stepping into the mandate. Waiga, you want to bring up that question? The, the question came up in the agriculture discussion as yeah. well as well is how many times can government step in to do work that private sector should actually be doing? Is this something, Bonyo, in your view, that private sector can adequately handle on its own? Must government come in for Kenyans to get affordable housing? Well, we always say that the business of government is not to do business. <laughs> but it is important <laughs> also to realize that the government has, re has seen that when left alone to the private sector, they will not do it to the standards or the procedures that they want. So the mortgage refinancing company will operate. It's, going, it's been registered as a private company. So that is why you see all these other people becoming in as shareholders. There's the World Bank in it, there's IFC in it, African Development Bank is part of it, there's Shelter Africa part of it. And that is why you seeing they're saying we want to bring in more banks on board so that they are shareholders to this company. So the government will only have about 20% shareholding in it, then the rest will be held by these people so that its operations are more like a private sector driven uh, 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 initiative. But at the end of the day, it is a government program. It's a government plan because affordable housing must uh, be achieved at the end of the day. I, I know Zinzi has a question, but what are the dangers when government gets involved in what are primarily private sector activities? When government does business, the problem is always sustainability. Mm -hmm. Yes, is it sustainable? You know, you really need to inject capital every now and again. Does the government have the latitude to pour in money into a private business as they wish? We've seen this with a number of organizations. Look at Uchumi why it is right now. At one point, the government said they're now tired mm -hmm. of injecting money in Uchumi, so <laughs> let the other shareholders also pump in money. Right. Look at where Uchumi is. Right. Look at National Bank of Kenya, which is... Uh, listed at the stock exchange, yes, but largely government-owned. Look at its fortunes now, dwindling and now being acquired by KCB. Right. Mm. So the government has got no business doing business. All right, Bonyo, but then my question would be, we're talking about affordable housing, but truly how affordable is this? How many Kenyans can afford to take a mortgage in this day and age when the economy is tight, Kenyans' pockets are also tight? How genuine is it? I think... The refinancing company is a good idea, but mm -hmm. there are certain fundamentals that must be addressed by the government. What is pushing the cost of housing in this country fundamentally is the cost of land. Okay. You have places that ideally land should not cost you more than uh, 250,000 shillings for an eighth of an acre. Mm -hmm. But you look at the market, it goes beyond 800,000 shillings up to 1 million Kenya shillings. So if the cost of land is not going to be addressed, then we will still have uh, the cost of our uh, housing in this country unaffordable to everybody. So the government must really work hard in ensuring that they address the cost of land first. Then they can start now implementing all these other aspects of right. it. Right. Lastly, my own personal question would be then the issue of interest. How will we make sure that once a Kenyan takes a mortgage, that tomorrow that interest rate will not scale up? How will we protect Kenyans? You realize that uh, we so far we have the interest rate caps in the market. Mm -hmm. And uh, they say that you cannot lend 4% above the central bank rate. So we are hoping, and it's one of the issues that we believe Denis Otieno is going to raise with the Treasury Secretary. How do we then protect Kenyans mm. 
because there's a lot of push and pull to ensure that the interest rate caps are repealed. Mm -hmm. If and when this happens, then how do you protect people to ensure that whatever money is that or the whatever mortgage they're going to acquire under this scheme is protected and safeguarded so that they don't feel exploited or cheated right. at the end of the day. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. That's Joseph Bonyo, our business editor, for giving us those insights. Trevor Mbija will stay with us and he'll have more updates shortly. But we